Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about VimWiki. Now, for those of you who have actually seen my very first video, and by first video I mean the one that wasn't just a podcast, that video was on a program called ZimWiki. Now, to this, to this day, I still use ZimWiki every single day. It's always on workspace number one, or tag number one, on my second monitor, right alongside Todoist. Those are the two things that are always on that tag, and I use it every single day. I do it for journaling, I do it for note taking, I outline all of my writing there. When I decide to make notes for a video, which is relatively not often, <laughs> as you can tell by the unorganized method of these videos, you know, I use ZimWiki for all those things. And it's become such a huge part of my workflow. And I just like it so much. I wish that it had syncing capabilities. I would, because I would love to be able to take some notes and do things on my phone. I'd love to be able to uninstall Joplin so I didn't have to. Because <laughs> I, the only reason I use Joplin is because it has a syncing capability, and I can take notes on my phone and sync things. It's the easiest way to get links from my phone to my computer. So it's my note taking system is a mess. I'm not going to fix that today, unfortunately, because I'm actually looking at something that's less syncable than SimWiki is actually, I'm, at least I believe so. I'm going to take a look at VimWiki. So VimWiki is a terminal-based personal database system. I think that's how they describe it. Really, it's to go through and take notes and create outlines and things like that. It supports VimWiki syntax, Markdown. Uh, the other kind of markdown that I don't know that anybody actually uses, probably somebody out there does use it, but most people just use regular markdown. Uh, but by default, it supports FimWiki syntax. And it's something that you have to learn. It's a little bit different. Now, the the syntax between VimWiki and ZimWiki, I'm <laughs> going to mess those names up a lot, a lot in this video. They're very similar. So if you've used ZimWiki or if you've used VimWiki and you switch between them, it should be fairly easy to figure out how to go about, you know, creating different types of syntax and formatting and stuff. Now, obviously, they're a little bit different because one's a GUI, one's a TUI, but uh, those differences are well documented. So today, anyways, I'm going to take a look at VimWiki. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, we're going to start off here in Terminal. Now, this is Alacrity. For those of you who know, I've switched to Alacrity full time as I said I was going to. It has been an interesting journey so far. I'll make a video on that sometime in a month or so when I've had some time to actually get my thoughts around it, but that's not the topic of today's video, so Matt, get on with it. So, in order to get into Vim with you, have to be in Vim. Now, I'm going to be using NeoVim, and whenever you see in my videos, I just type V. That's because I have an alias set to really when I type V, what it's doing is and Vim. It's the same thing. So I just type V because I'm lazy and it's easier that way. So in order to get into VimWiki, like I said, you have to be in Vim or NeoVim and you have to have it installed. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like to install it. So I use VimPlug and if you don't know how to use VimPlug, I believe I have a video on how to install Vim plugins. So let me actually see if I can go through and actually... We'll go to this and go to vim.config, neo, and vim, plugins, and plugins.bin. And this is the one that you need right here. Uh, plug vimwiki slash vimwiki, vimwiki in single quotes. And you can install it using any plugin manager, you know, Vundle, Vimplug, any of the other ones. I mean, there's like five or six vim plugin managers. You don't even need a plugin manager. Technically, you could just install it some other way. I've never actually done a manual Vim plugin install before, but you could do it if you if you know how to do it. But anyways, that's how you install it, and you just do run plug install, and it will go through and install all the plugins and make sure they're all installed and updated. And once you've done that, if you want to get into VimWiki, you can get into VimWiki from any page within Vim. So you can have a file open, you can you can be like where I was before and just on in start uh, this is what it's called Startify. I, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, I think this is a Startify plugin, but you can be anywhere in Vim. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is hit leader WW. Now, your leader key is almost certainly going to be backslash. Now, I have a huge problem when it comes to figuring out which one's backslash, which one's forward slash. 
backslash is the one that's under your backspace key, the one with the pipes symbol on the top. So, for those of you who are Hollanders like I am, and everything's backward and forwards and whatever, the backslash one is the one above the enter key, below the space, the backspace key. So you want to hit that one, and then WW. Now, for me, I've changed my leader key to space, so I do space WW, and that takes me into VimWiki. Now, there's just tons of things that you can do with VimWiki. So the first thing you probably will learn how to do is once you're in insert mode, you can create a link. And to, do, to create a link, you do double brackets, okay? Now, if you have Vim Surround installed, it will actually close those brackets for you. If not, you'll actually have to close them yourselves, which is, is you know, a travesty. I mean, obviously, that's way too much work. <laughs> so you create double brackets, and then you can just type in the the text of the link so the name of the link so I'm just gonna do this is a link now you can also go through and add a like a, an alias or a description for that link so the name of the link is going to be this is a link if I do a pipe and do a link and then hit hit um, get out of insert mode and then unhighlight that line or move off from that line, it'll actually say link, but the name of the link is still, this is a link. Okay, so that's how you create a link. That's very simple. Now, if you've used ZimWiki before, you'll know that in order to create a link with multiple words, you have to surround it in double brackets and then hit control R. So in many ways, this is easier because this one, it doesn't matter how many words you have within the brackets, it's always going to be a link. And you don't have to do any fancy keyboard bindings. So once you've created a link and you're out of insert mode, you can hit enter to follow that link. So if you're in a link and you you or you followed a link, in order to get back to the page you were on before, you want to hit backspace, and that takes you back to the page you were on before. Now, there are other key bindings that you should probably know when it comes to links. Let's say we're on this link right here. If we do shift and tab, it will actually jump to the next tab or the next shift and tab will jump to the next link excuse me and this is good for if you have, let's say you have a document of you know a hundred different links and you just want and there's stuff in between them let's say there's I don't know uh, let's say there's a list in between these so if we do insert and then uh, asterisk this is a list this is more of a list this is a list point whatever and we're on this link here. If we do shift tab, it'll actually skip the stuff in the middle and go to the next link. And it's really helpful if you have a whole bunch of stuff in between links or if you have a whole large document or whatever. So you can also go through and I believe use tab. So tab will actually go through them as well. So shift tab goes previous to the previous link. Tab goes to the next link. I Again, I do everything backwards. Now, there's another thing you can do with links. So if you have split set up to the point where you can actually go through and navigate between them and again I believe I have a video somewhere saying how to do that uh, if you hit control enter this well that actually didn't work did it I must have a a key binding that messes with that somewhere so what that should do and it probably will do it for you if you hit control enter what it should do is open that link in a vertical split why it doesn't do that for me, I'm assuming it's because I have some key binding that is conflicting with that. I'm not actually sure what it would be. Mm, so that's something I'll have to investigate off camera. But if for most people, if you hit shift enter or control enter, you'll enter some kind of split. Now, shift enter, I believe, creates a horizontal split. Control enter creates a vertical split. Like I said, why that's not working for me, I'm not sure. Let me try Shift-Enter. Nope, Shift-Enter didn't work either. That is really weird. I'm not sure why that's not working for me. Like it's probably going to have something to do with a conflicting key binding. All right, so that's the links. The next thing we should talk about is the regular syntax. Now, like I said, VimWiki uses kind of a modified version of Markdown. So it's not exactly the same. So, and let's just go ahead and follow this link here. And we'll go into a new page. And if you want to create a bulleted 
list, you get into insert mode and do asterisk, this is a list. And then it will continue creating asterisks for you until you press enter and then it will obviously go on. Just kind of just like you would see in a, a word processor or something. So this is also a list. So that's how you do bulleted lists. You can also do numbered lists by doing one list item, one list item, two, and so on. Now, that's pretty similar to what you'll find in Markdown. I believe that's exactly the same, actually. But where Vim syntax actually, or VimWiki syntax actually differs for sure is how you create headers. So in regular Markdown, you use the pound sign. So this would be a header one. And I misspelled something there, but it doesn't matter. That's not the way you do it in, in VimWiki. Uh, that just creates a comment or something. I'm not exactly sure what it does. I believe, I believe it creates a comment or creates an indent or something. I'm not actually sure, but headers are done done like this. So this is a header or just an H1 and you end it with a equals. If you want to do an H2, it's two equals. This is H2 equals equals. And then three, this is H3. Three. And of course, I didn't put an extra equals there. So that is how you do headers here. And like I said, that is different to what you would find in regular Markdown. Now you can go through, and I will leave a link to the GitHub page for VimWiki in the video description. It has all the stuff that I'm talking about. You can go through and in your init.vim file or your vimrc file, put a couple lines that will allow you to use regular old Markdown. If you're familiar with Markdown, and you would rather use that than the Vim version of Markdown, you can easily change it. Uh, now, I'm actually more familiar with this because this is exactly how ZimWiki works, the, at least in terms of syntax. The linking is a little bit different, like I said, because it, it uses pluses and stuff for creating links with one word, and then you have to do the brackets and the control R for multiple word links. It's a little, there, a little weird, but... Uh, I digress. So I, I'm always just going to compare these to, to ZimWiki because that's pretty much what this is. ZimWiki and VimWiki are very, very similar. So that's basically the syntax that you have to know. Now, if you want to know more syntax, you can always go through and do control, uh, colon H and then VimWiki and then syntax. And then that will open up a split with a whole bunch of options for VimWiki and the syntax. Now, it, it will allow you to go through and, and show you how to do bold text, italics text, bold italics text. Now, those will only work if your terminal has a font set for those things. So, for example, let me close this. If I wanted to do bold text, I would have to do asterisk bold I can't type for the damn today text and then end with an asterisk and then it will actually change that to the font you you have set as your bold terminal text if your terminal doesn't have a bold terminal text set or if you're using termite termite you usually only set one font usually that's like a font font family so if you're using something like JetBrains mono I'm not actually sure that that has a bold version. Uh, and there's many fonts that don't have bold, bold versions. They don't have italic versions. They're just one font, you know. They're not like Ubuntu Mono or whatever that has like 30 different variations. Or Noto has like, I don't know, 100 different variations because it comes with, you know, different language packs and stuff. So your use on bold and italics, let me do italics may differ because your font that you're using in your terminal may not have that support. So that is just something to keep in mind. I'm losing my voice, so you'll have to forgive me. So that's the basic markup. Now there there are some other key bindings that we should probably go over. So we talked about shift enter and control enter. Those don't work for me for some reason. It's possible that I'd have to go through and 
define those manually. I'm not sure, but you can find out more key bindings by doing colon H. Oops, I actually got to be in the right workspace here to do this. So colon H vim wiki, and then uh, I believe it's key mappings, key bind. It's just mappings, mappings. And, you know, and I didn't go through and zoom any of this stuff in, so you probably haven't seen the thing of this. I do apologize for that. So here along the bottom, you'll see vim wiki dash mappings, and that will again go through and open up a split and it will tell you several uh, global mappings that it has that will work outside of VimWiki. So it, it talks about leader WW. So these are the things that are going to open up VimWiki that when it's when it's closed. So this you can also go through and create a new index file by using I believe W so leader WT will open the default wiki index in a new tab. So I believe actually let's go through and see if that will work for me. I don't I don't know. So if I if I get out of this here and I go through and um open up them again and do leader wt. Yeah, that will, that just opens up in a new tab, which is good. So And I don't actually have set up key bindings to go back and forth between the tabs. <laughs> that is a huge <laughs> mistake in terms of my NeoVim config. That's something I'm going to have to fix. I didn't even know. I don't use tabs that often. I, <laughs> I didn't even realize I didn't have it set up. So anyways, that would open up in a new, new tab. Leader WS will o select and open a wiki index file. So if you have multiple indexes. So basically an index is where a whole wiki is going to be stored and you can have multiple ones you can also delete with leader wd but that deletes the wiki file that you're in leader wr will rename the wiki file that you're in so by default i believe it's the index is called index.wiki i believe so if i actually do leader what did i say leader wr and then you would ask you to say yes and I'm going to just name this main.wiki. And then hit continue. So now it's main.wiki.wiki. So you don't actually have to add the .wiki. I didn't even know that part. So you can also rename it. That way, if you have multiple indexes, which, you know, the more organized you are, the more likely you are to have multiple indexes because that will allow you to create one for school. It will allow you to create one for, you know, work or whatever. And you, they don't have to be combined. Now, you could obviously go through and combine them if you wanted to. Like for ZimWiki, I have multiple notebooks, but I only ever really use one. I just create, you know, top level links for all the separate things that I need. So, you know, writing, scripts, whatever. And then everything is below those organized as they are. That's probably what I would do in ZimWiki. But if you're a more organized person, you could go through and change you know, between different indexes. That way, you know, they're not mixed together. So that is just a very brief look at VimWiki. It's more powerful than what I've gone through and shown you. There are tons of different things you can do with it. There are different ways of interacting with it. Like I said, you can use Markdown if you prefer Markdown. There are different ways you can go through and change those key bindings that I showed you. All that stuff will be in the link in the video description where the the GitHub page is what I'm, the word I'm looking for. Good Lord. Anyways, if you want to go through and change this stuff or read more about it, you can get to that link in the video description. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast, on Facebook at the LinuxCast. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I'd like to go ahead and thank our current patrons. Devon, Zach, Marcus, American Camp. Zank is a brand new one, so welcome, Zach. Thanks, everybody, for supporting us. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.